So today we're filming a chest workout. Um, this is actually Evan and mine's first time working out together. We started with a flat barbell bench press. Um, I usually like to start off with a compound movement, heavy compound movement. Uh, Evan, you agree, right? Me too. Yeah, high five for that. Awkward high five. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we started with a flat barbell bench press. Um, we did a couple heavy sets. The first thing that goes is my pressing string. Yeah, but dude, you can't feel bad. I mean, you get off that bench, you, you see yourself in the mirror, and you know, you, you're, everything is busting out of everywhere, and really, that is the goal, right? I mean, at some point, okay, you get on the bench, and or whatever you do, you're really only impressing. Right. I mean, dudes, you know, on I mean, stage, no one cares. No one cares. I mean, the goal in bodybuilding is to have the look. Right. So whether you get the look with five reps or you get the look with twenty reps, it really doesn't matter. Right. Um, so no, you can't. You can't feel bad about that. Yeah. And and you know, like we were talking about earlier too, it also uh, dictates like how you do the actual repetition. So you can kind of slow it down, focus more on the squeeze and the contraction, and that would probably lessen the weight of the repetitions that we're actually. Or you could pile some weight on there and just, you know, see how you know, rev out. Generally speaking, when I bench, I like to just let it rip. Um, there will be other movements where I will slow it down, be a little bit more intent or more deliberate in my, my execution. But for me, uh, and this is coming from someone who had a hard time developing this chest, um, believe it or not, you know, just tucking my, my scapula and my shoulder blades and just boom, boom, boom. Believe it or not, that's how I end up getting the best I felt like just grip it and rip it. Grip it and rip it. Yeah. Because I felt like the, a lot of, at least for me, when I would go through a longer range of motion, it just became tricep and shoulder uh, sitting. Yeah. But everybody's different. Everybody's different. I mean, I see your chest development, so I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to argue with Sean. <laughs> try to gauge like I don't want to go in and pick up like a lighter dumbbell and then just kind of just take more wind out of my sails with it I figured okay this is probably what I've got enough juice for I'm just gonna pick this up and just go with it and I think I only got maybe 12 reps with it so I figured okay that's about right I'm just gonna stick with this week so when you when you train are you uh Training for a particular feeling? Are you trying to, um, I don't know, push a certain load? I mean, obviously, you know, I'm always trying to maintain a, a, a viable amount of mind muscle connection. That said, my goal was always the maximum amount of weight for the maximum amount of reps. So, like, just from my own experience, like, you know, you know how, like, you, uh, if you're squatting, you would squat four plates for, Eight. If you could get to the point where you're squatting four plates for 15, you know that that is going to produce some really good hypertrophy. You're going to have a bigger muscle. Or you're not bigger muscle. Someone who's someone who's squatting 600 pounds for reps, good uh, reps, for good solid reps, you know, connecting with the muscle is probably going to have bigger quads than say somebody who's doing the same. Because I feel like oh, although it's important to push heavier weight, you know, in order to get your threshold up. Um, you know, you're not going to just come to bench, say, 315 or, or squat 405 just for 20 up. reps. Yeah, you have to push it with heavier weight so that 405 begins to feel lighter to you and you can push it for more weight. That said, I feel like when people say, well, what's more important, heavy weight or high reps? But like the answer is both. You want heavy weight for high reps. Because if you get under the bar to bench press, you could bench four plates for five reps. I don't feel like that doesn't really guarantee much. 
you might just be a dude who's strong. But if you're gonna bench press 405 or 12, chances are you're probably gonna have good upper body development. Right. You're gonna be fucking big. People are always looking for kind of, I guess, the ideal rep range. And I don't think there really is an ideal rep range, but I think um, anywhere between, I would say, 8 and 20 would be. Right. In my experience, it's best for hypertrophy. I agree. So, you know, if you even, people a lot of times will shy away from that higher rep range, right? 15 to 20. Right. But a lot of people, I think, when they're, I think they're under the impression if they could get 20 reps or something, it's too light. But they don't realize you have to die <laughs> on rep 20. You know what I mean? Like, you're not getting 20, like, you're getting like 16, and then it's a, all out battle to get 20. Yeah, and I think if you're doing yeah. that, you're probably gonna get a good hypertrophy result. Yeah, exactly. Like for like with squats, you know, four or five plates per side, if you get 20 reps, you're gonna be buried. Buddy. You're gonna be buried, man. And I, I don't know about you, but I feel like the feeling of doing that is much greater yes, than like putting out eight or seven, six. Thousand percent. I feel like it elicits a much greater response in your body. But going back to what you said, you still need to push it. You still need to push the lower rep ranges sometimes in order to build that high end, uh, in order to yeah, in order to I get agree. The, the higher end reps. So, so, so we started off with two presses, and then we moved into a machine fly. Um, I usually like to um, do more machine work uh, towards the end of my my training sessions, and um, and probably focus a little bit more on contraction rather than just pushing the weight. Yeah, and I I really like especially like with seeing that machine. I like having you there because on like those last couple reps, there's only so much of just heaving it or, or muscling it you could do. But then if you have someone to step in at the end and say, okay, keep focusing on that contraction, I'm gonna bring you in for three more or whatever it is. Right. I think that's really beneficial. Yeah, you can keep the mind-muscle connection on the chest. And like Evan was saying, you don't have to heave it and use other body parts and potentially injure yourself. So, uh, you know, that's one, another benefit of working out with somebody as well as you uh, the assisted reps in towards the end of the set. Uh, the chest development is one of the things that's been uh, kind of came natural to me. So um, I don't want to say I can do anything and grow a chest. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, everybody has good. at least one of those body parts. Yeah, for me it's chest and back. I can I have pretty loose form with those two, and uh, I can end up growing. But legs for me is one thing I struggle with, and I really have to kind of slow everything down and you can concentrate on the contraction. You can't just you know pile weight on the leg press and rip it out because that would give me you feel like when it's a muscle group you have a harder time connecting with that slowing down the negative enables you to connect better oh yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely absolutely and and taking your time with warm-up sets as well yes and, and really just because some people try to rush through the, the warm-up sets or the feeder sets whatever you want to call them to get to their i guess to their main set um, but with legs in particular, um, which is something that I kind of struggle with, I try to slow everything down and just try to try to be in the moment and, and concentrate on the contraction and get a good pump more. And then after flies, we uh, we finished off with dips, which it's probably something that's been ingrained in me. I don't know about you, but my first weight bench in my basement used to have you know you could take the posts out uh -huh. and move them in and they had like handles that came off it so you could do right. dips off the back of the bench yeah, um cool. so that became one of my staple exercises from the beginning so yeah. even to this day man i love dips so for chest so dips also are... just for a total upper body uh -huh. yeah see i usually do dips for uh triceps um dude i so... do dips for chest i do dips for shoulders i do dips for triceps yeah and, and again with uh that's where form comes into play you know with, with dips so say if I'm trying to target chest, uh, I lean forward a little bit more in order to target my lower back. Um, so when I do dips for triceps, I would usually just kind of lean back to try to keep my torso straight up and to eliminate any uh, pectoral involvement. And then if I'm trying to hit my shoulders, I'll go a lot slower on the negative. All right. And I'll feel it. And I'll have to try that. I'll have to try that. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that was, at least for me, uh, a, a pretty well-rounded chest workout, a couple pressing movements, one fly, sometimes, you know, I'll do a second fly movement, and then something like dips that kind of ties, I feel like ties together my whole upper body, whether I'm doing dips or a push up or something like that. Yeah, usually about four or five exercises um, will comprise my whole chest workout. 
and uh, you know, being my first time working out with Evan, it actually worked out pretty good. So we kind of agreed on a lot of things, so it went pretty smoothly. All right, guys, uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope if, uh, if you were able to at least find one thing useful or, if nothing else, entertaining, uh, then it was a success. Um, me and Sean are going to sign off, go get a bite to eat, and uh, catch you guys next time. See you guys.